Burr on TV. Hello and welcome to TV Burr. The Queen celebrates her birthday on Coronation Street. Happy birthday to Polar Bear agrees with David Attenborough on Frozen Planet. The cubs are born blind. Yeah, that's right, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> and Fish goes on holiday on Autumn Watch Live. Anion will find it really difficult elbowing his way into a place like this, where there are so many well-established <laughs> adults. I was surprised to see a seal doing the intro to the Doctor Who theme on Frozen Planet this week. The male seal's calls can be heard over 15 miles away. <laughs> yeah, they're good at the theme tunes, the seals. <laughs> Strictly! <laughs> <laughs> I was disappointed to see Tess Daly drop one on Strictly at the weekend <laughs> and then waft it about to disperse it. It's a different experience, you know, it's a bit like being an athlete, you know, when you dance, but uh, no, great, it's great It's just tonight. a strenuous, isn't it? Yeah, I just wish <laughs> <laughs> then someone ran on and stole Russell Grant's crash helmet. It's a big problem with live shows. With the recession on, people keep running off with the equipment. I think I saw someone making off with a guitar from the X Factor at the weekend. That was last night, but tonight all they can do is hope that... <laughs> Give it back! <laughs> shit! Oh, my eye! It's shit! <laughs> On, on Holby City this week, there was a lady with a debilitating illness. You know, that illness that makes you unable to say the names of countries. Do you know, I have had two thank yous in that entire time. One was the precursor to the suggestion of a kiss under the mistletoe. The other was for the benefit of some client from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really tough one. This is the most positive thing I have done all year. That and get my new job, which starts in a week, in Canada. <laughs> yeah, I had it for a while. It took me three hours to book a holiday in... <laughs> oh, it's come back in... Sardinia. Uh... <laughs> no. S Sicily. No, keep going. S S South Africa. No, further north. S Switzerland. Portugal, that's right, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't start with an S. Yeah, southern Portugal, we've got a flat there. <laughs> <laughs> Living with the Amish now on Channel 4, which looked at life in the Amish community over in... Uh... America. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with the Amish, it's all about keeping temptation at bay. Pins are used for fastening. We have to avoid the temptation of fancy buttons. Oh, oh that's a lovely button. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I prefer plainer, older buttons because they're easier to get hold of. <laughs> well, we all know it's not easy to resist the temptation of buttons. The reason we have only three buttons like this is if we have buttons all the way down, then it's too tempting to open them up. You know, first it'll be one button, then it'll be two buttons. Pretty soon you'll have... Your shirt off, you're down to your vest and you've caught a chill. <laughs> <laughs> this show involves sending some British teenagers over to live with an Amish family and they were just your typical English teens. I, I dropped out of college and um, I'm not too sure if I'm going to go back yet. I'm quite happy to just do nothing and just sort of chill. On your side, mate, yeah, that's what I like to do. Happy to do nothing and chill. Or maybe I'll pop down some pools and do a bit of protesting, but is it OK <laughs> if I don't stay the night? Because I've got, like, allergies. <laughs> 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 
The Amish ban all modern devices like phones, computers and cars. And posh girl Charlotte was a little bit naive. Wow, this looks pretty technical. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? A washing machine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a washing machine. But once she got the hang of it, she really enjoyed it. So you just pop them in? Yeah. Oh, you like it? Yeah, it's really funky. It's really mm. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, washing machines, they're really funky and different. <laughs> But I guess what I like most about the Amish way of life is that haircut. Does anything look different? Yeah, the hair. Oh, oh, always on it. <laughs> Can you take your hat off, please? Oh, you did it! Oh! <laughs> 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 oh, no. oh no. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> but look, I think the real thing is Jonathan's had his cut. <laughs> See? Yeah. I went to the hairdressers and asked for an Amish. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I whip my hair back and forth. I whip my hair back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's enough of that. <clears throat> so, uh... oh. A gypsy life for me now over on Bio. <laughs> Which follows the attempts of Jake Bowers and Tracy Neddick to discover latent gypsy talent in a competition that they're calling Traveller's Got Talent. Tracy found herself a little bit wound up by the pressure of having to organise the whole thing single-handed and compared herself to a bottle of iron brew. Filling the hall is not Tracy's only problem. She's also got to keep a lid on her own rapidly rising blood pressure. It's like getting a bottle of iron brew, shaking it and shaking it and shaking it, and then it's just ready, you know, but it's so ready to explode. <laughs> so once this is over tomorrow, I might just loosen the lid a little bit and just let it all come out. <laughs> and that's pretty much the best way I can explain how I feel right now. I don't understand. You, you, you take a bottle of iron brew and you, you shake it and you shake it and you shake it. <laughs> and then you, you take the lid off. <laughs> What the? <laughs> See what she means. So, <clears throat> who's competing? Forty-six-year-old Tracy is a Romani gypsy who lives in rural Shropshire. Mm, Tracy, 46, that's about my age. I'd be very interested to see what she looks like. I'm entering Traveller's Got Talent. It's a time just to let people know who Traveller's are and what they're about. <laughs> not my type. No, not my type. Well, give her a chance. Let's hear him sing. Are you going to discover a Not if you're going, no. Who else is in the running? Well, there's a boy band called... I'm interested to see about the boy band as well. It's a really interesting name for a boy band called Boy Band. Boy Band. Boy Band. It's <laughs> a good name for a boy band. <laughs> Give them a chance, though. Let's hear them play. And so to their aptly named pals, Boy Band. <laughs> What's happening to me? My legs just want to dance. <laughs> but by far my favourite performer was Clarice Yvonne and her self-penned number, because you know what? There just aren't enough songs about tarmac, are there? This is a little old gypsy travelling song and I made it on myself years ago. When my dad used to tarmac. Unload all the tarmac here, put the roller in low gear, roll out the tarmac. They started off with rakes and shovels so simply. They have more equipment now than we're MP. 
I'll find a brand new game someday, but until then it's chip and spray and roll out the tarmac. Yeah, just start enough songs about tarmac, are they? Well, the good news for tarmac fans is Clarice has got an album out for Christmas with a whole bunch of tarmac-related numbers. New from KTL Records, Clarice Evans' Christmas tarmac sing-along. Oh, the lovely tarmac. Oh, the lovely tarmac. Roll your tarmac in, tarmac out. From up-tempo party tarmac favourites. We wish you a lot of tarmac. We wish you a lot of tarmac. We wish you a lot of tarmac and a happy new year. To seasonal ballads like Silent Tarmac. Silent Tarmac. <laughs> Moody Tarmac. And of course her classic, Roll Out the Tarmac. Unload all the tarmac here. Put the roller in low gear. Roll out the tarmac. Clarice Yvonne sings the road surfaces. <laughs> out now, in all good branches of Woolworths. <laughs> Roll out the tarmac. Nice little album. Which brings us to our TV expert of the week. TV expert of the week. There are so many accidents every year where farmers have really bad falls. That's going to hurt, isn't it? That's going to hurt. <laughs> Symphony Now on BBC Four, in which Simon Russell Beale looked back at classical music and talked about it. And Simon revealed some fascinating facts about American composer Charles Ives and the inspiration for his work. <laughs> One of his father's experiments that I know Charles Ives was really interested in because it's well documented, his dad had one band march out of St. Peter Church on Main Street. And then he had another band coming from Richfield and they were marching the opposite direction playing two different pieces of music. And the effect of the two different pieces of music, you can hear it in almost everything Charles Ives later wrote. Now, <laughs> I like the marching band that set off from St. Peter's Church Main Street, but then I like the marching band that set off from Richfield, but which is better? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Tries to hail a plane on Brave New World. <laughs> Hitler faced clock on Antiques Roadshow. How come you've got this fantastic German table regulator? This clock has been handed down through my family for about five generations. Um, <laughs> and dirty weekend in Plymouth for Elliot Don Fairground Attractions. Five days after the London riots, Elliot is cutting his losses. A slot has opened up at a Plymouth event almost 200 miles away, and he's managed to quickly fill it with his sizzler. <laughs> Little England now, where we caught up with Andy and Nicky. This is Andy and Nicky Spillane, alpaca farmers who sold their home in Norfolk and moved to France in 1998. Traitors! <laughs> Welcome back to the Dordogne a part of France that's become home to over 20,000 British expats. Traitors! <laughs> My husband and I have worked for a long time in, in other countries. We decided when we retired that we would prefer to have a warm climate. It's not that I don't like the UK, I love it. Traitors! <laughs> We're well, not good enough for you. It was good enough for Winston Churchill and Lord Nelson and Her Majesty the Queen <laughs> and Wayne Rooney and... <laughs> Katie Price and <laughs> Terry Katona and Rebecca Brooks and oh, Camilla Parker Bowles and Frankie Cocosa. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. Put me a ticket on Eurostar one way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> 
Ray had moved out there four years ago and had a keen interest in keeping bees. Why do I do beekeeping? I've no idea. They sting you. They don't give you any honey. You sure they're bees, Sally? <laughs> You're not keeping wasps, are you? <laughs> Which brings us to our best way to mark a competition drawing to a close of the week. Best way to mark a competition drawing to a close of the week. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Kirsty's Handmade Britain now, and this week Kirsty was attending to matters horticultural. We are a nation of garden lovers. On average, we each spend around £20,000 on them during our lifetime. Around 16 million of us are lucky enough to have a garden, and many who don't are cultivating window boxes or allotments. And many more are sitting at home watching Cash in the Attic and pigging out on crisps. <laughs> this week, Kirsty was making rosemary shortbread. This is the calm before the storm, but one ingredient is missing, rosemary. So I'm going to run out in the rain, grab some and come back in again. Don't move. OK. I'd be back. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's the shortbread coming along? It's a nice thickness. Now, obviously, I want to taste it, but if there's one missing, does that disqualify you? Oh! Oh, no. Well, no, I'll have to taste that one, won't I? <laughs> it may taste good to me, but I'm taking a huge gamble with the rosemary and lavender. I've got uneven wedges and a missing piece. Uh-oh! It was a huge gamble. Now she's ended up with uneven edges and a missing piece. So that's the one that's missing one. All the other shortbread is traditional and taking a risk is starting to feel like a bad idea. But my problems are about to get even bigger. Problems are about to get even bigger! <laughs> she's only bought one lot of rosemary and she's going to have to submit a round of rosemary one word short. <laughs> I've got two batches of lavender, but only one of rosemary because I broke one of the wedges. Unfortunately, I brought the wrong batch. So I'm going to have to submit a round of rosemary with one wedge short. Well, it certainly puts the crisis in the Middle East into perspective. <laughs> A very British party now, available to view on Richard and Judy's old channel, Watch. And Vanessa was busy organising her four-year-old son's birthday, and she threw the book at it. I'm having all this done because it's your party and because I want to look nice for your party. What? Nothing to do with my own vanity, of course. Of course. OK. Off we go for it. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Meanwhile, husband Peter was busy planning his own surprise to fire a gun to get the party started with a bang. But you have to be careful how much gunpowder you use. So I've put in little just to be on the safe side. And then I can try with a bit more if um, it has made a loud enough bang. Yeah, just a little powder in there, Peter. We don't want too big a bang. Yep, I still fit. Now. <laughs> Has he gone? <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week.
There are some great shows on TV at the moment about hotels and bed and breakfasts. Over on Four in a Bed, Dave certainly seems to be enjoying himself. It's a nice soft bed. <laughs> the soft is in bad work. Why not? Treat yourself, mate. <laughs> Then, of course, there's a similar show, May the Best House Win, which this week was in Manchester. Let's see what's going down. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much. <laughs> there were some real characters involved this week. Finally, Bill. Oh, I see. And here's my friend. Oh, yeah. I go by the name of Joyce Division. You don't see the beard as a problem, then, Joyce. <laughs> Let's see him in action. When routine bites hard, and ambitions are low, and resentment cries high, that you know Sing along now, love. Oh, what heroes of all Yeah, fitting tribute and true keepers of the Joy Division flame. <laughs> Welcome them now, ladies and gentlemen, from Manchester, it's Joyce Division! When routine fights hard and ambitions are low And resentment right high But emotions won't grow Yes, love, love will tear us apart again Love, love will tear us apart again, apart again. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> That's all from us. Good night. Well, there are ten stars sitting in a camp, and one of them has to fall. Which of them will leave the jungle tonight? Ant and Deck are back with all the highlights since Anita got the boot. I'm a celebrity. Is at 9.45. Next, though, get ready for a night of heroes and guilty pleasures in The X Factor. The farewell gesture is a raspberry.